Okay, I hope this is a good angle. If not, I apologize. Man, it's so hard to figure this out. Okay, so what are we making tonight? We are making the itty bitty bag. It's a gusseted flat bottom. Um, it's an itty bitty flat bottom girl. This is my flat bottom series with um, the flat bottom and no zipper and just a flap closure. So this is gonna be tricky because I'm using directional fabric. That may not have been a good idea. Okay, so what are we missing here? Look, mom, no zipper line. All we're using is this middle line. The other line is just to give you a kind of an idea. So for centering your fabric, we're gonna have two pieces of lining here, lining A and lining B. Lining A is your small piece, lining B is your big piece. And then we have our exterior panel. I hope this works because it's got an odd background. So we're gonna get started with our lining A piece. And we're gonna put that on the back just as if it was a zipper. So we're gonna line it up with the, this, the bottom of our panel with this. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna sew this down. We're gonna flip it just as if we were doing a zipper pouch. Um, and then we're gonna seam the lining together, which will produce the hole that we will use to turn the bag right side out. So go ahead and tape that down. So you're gonna line up the bottom with your that placement line. And then on the, top, on the front, we're gonna do the same thing with our exterior. So I need to think about this. I think my flap's gonna end up being backwards. So this is directional. We're just gonna go with it. I don't know, the flap may be upside down because it's gonna be one big piece, but we're gonna go with it. So we'll put this piece. So let's see, this is gonna go Pluck, pluck, pluck. Maybe it'll be okay. We'll see. Okay, so go ahead. This is right side this way. So flip it over this way and it'll be the right direction. And tape that guy down. If you have not done my flat bottom series, flat bottom girl series, you are missing out. I have a whole series. Um, more sizes and variations than you could even think about. I just never, I just kept going and going and going. That's a zipper pocket series. So um, I've had this series <clears throat> on the back burner for quite a while. And for some reason this week I was like, oh, I wanna make a tiny little, a tiny little bag. So I was like, oh, I can do the flat bottom girl, but in miniature. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and turn this over. And we're gonna flip it down uh, so we can do our top stitching. So go ahead and finger crease this gently. You don't wanna push your hoop out of the way. Tape that down, same thing on the front. Now with vinyl, sometimes you need to use the um, a boning tool. Um, I can't find my boning tool. So I'm gonna use the edge of my zipper. I mean my, this thing. And fold that down. So I'm just going to use the edge of this ruler that's been broke. Make sure you pull this tautly because if you don't, your top stitching won't look right. Tape this down and we're going to top stitch. This is actually quite a fast bag to make. So the pattern has four sizes. There's a four by four size. Let's do the top stitch. Um, where's that little guy at? Four four. How cute is this? I didn't put the stamp in it um, on this one, but look how cute that is. So this will hold the small AirPod holders. This size here, the small 5x7 will hold the larger AirPods. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and seam our lining. Before we do that, we need to move our um, exterior out of the way of that bottom line. So just fold that up here for right now. And we're gonna go on to the back of the hoop. And in case your cutting is not even, I'm gonna go ahead and draw a line about one inch underneath my baseline. 
And you could have done this. I should have told you to do this before we got started, but it doesn't matter. You can eyeball it if you want. I'm just drawing a line to give you an idea where we want our fabric to end. You can go a half an inch if you're confident in your piecing um, ability. So put it there. And if your piece is going past that, oh, I couldn't have done it better if I tried. I measured that perfectly. Mine is actually ending there. If yours is extending past, go ahead and cut it off right there. So this is lining A. Now you're gonna get lining B and you're gonna put it upside down or right side facing down. And you're gonna line up the short edge with your seam line here. This is gonna become our seam allowance and you're gonna tape it down. Then you're gonna carefully flip this over so that it does not come undone and get this underneath your presser foot. Make sure your exterior is folded out of the way. And now we're gonna do the seam for our, our lining. And this is where it's gonna be our turning hole. Oops, mine did not catch the bobbin. Let's do that again. My bobbin is getting low. That happens a lot when my bobbin starts to get low and I have to milk it along. For some reason it won't catch. Let's see if we can make it through. Okay, so. Start that again. Okay, make sure this is all still in position. It's not, all right. Let's try and pull the bobbin thread up. Let this get all pushed over here. Sometimes you can pull the bobbin thread up and it'll come up. Ah, this is not one of those times. Oh wait, maybe it is. I think it's dragon catching. Nope, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and replace this bobbin. <sighs> Story of my life with these bobbins. I don't have good luck with them. I don't know what kind of bobbins these are. They, I got them when I got the machine. Actually, I got these when I got my 350. And um, so I have no idea what brand they are, but they are from the quilt or the machine store. The purchaser bought them at the machine store. Okay, well, this one's nice. Usually they're too tight at the beginning and I have to um, ravel off a whole bunch of thread to get them to work, but I may have already used this one because it's already unraveled. Okay, here we go again. Yeah, there we go. Awesome. All right. Try this again. All righty. Make sure our fabric has not come loose down there. I don't know what's going on. I'm keeping moving my machine around. All right. See, it was caught in that loop. I was afraid it was going to get stuck. There we go. Now we're gonna go ahead and fold the back down and then fold the front down again so that we can create our first pleat marker. Our first pleat marker will actually end up finishing at this seam. So gently, see how this is gonna be loose right here. You wanna be real gentle because if you are too tight here, it'll make that piece bow. This is our loose part, so just fold that down. And then if we folded that down correctly, our pleat, our first pleat marker is gonna end right there anyway, but we don't wanna pleat through that lining. So now fold this down and tape it in place. And I'm gonna go ahead and change the thread color so that you guys can see the pleats against this black better. As long as we're doing red on the back, I might as well use red. Or I don't have any red. All right, we'll use green. The pleat marks will actually be 
in the seam allowance, so it's fine. Doesn't matter what the thread color is. You're not gonna change your thread color, because up close and personal, you will be able to see yours, but I want you to be able to see on the video. So we're gonna use green. Okay, make sure my lining didn't come loose from all that moving around. Make sure you trim these little jumps as you go along so they don't get caught in your final product. And the little snippet here is on purpose. That just gives a little bit more something to push against when you fold it up. So we're gonna go to the back. And it's harder to see on the back, of course, since we're looking at the bobbin. And I taped, cut right through that tape. So we're just gonna go ahead and fold our back up. And basically we're just gonna Fold it back at the seam, see how that is? It's hard to represent that in the picture in the PDF though. So, tape it so it doesn't move around on us. Carefully turn that back over. Okay, and now we're gonna go ahead and fold our, our exterior up against those little ticks. And you'll notice it'll be right on top of this line. If you do it right, it should be right on top of this line. And then go ahead and tape it down on both sides. And then we're gonna run our second pleat marker. So there's three pleat markers that create one pleat. And that pleat is what will be, forms the gusset in the back. Okay, and we're gonna go ahead and do our second marker and you want to be careful when you're traveling around here so that it doesn't your presser foot doesn't come down here and get stuck stuck underneath there I can't know how every single machine works so you have to kind of be aware of how your machine works yourself okay now we're gonna go ahead again let's trim these little jumps we're gonna take the tape off front and back and we're gonna fold it down against the pleat marker and this is coming off. I hope this is going to be okay. I got this from New Moon Stitches. So, in the back, let's go ahead and fold that down. And you see how I did the same little T structure at the top of that with a couple little stitches over to the top that helps to reinforce the um, fold. Without those there, I discovered those late. I wish I had done that with Flat Bottom Girl. When you just make it a line, um, sometimes you pop the stitches at the top. So here we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna fold it against those little ticks. And then I'm gonna get my ruler out. And I'm gonna go ahead and press this down. And I'm gonna tape it down on both sides. And then we're gonna do our, ooh, I did it, I undid it, I undid it. We're gonna do our D-ring strap connector placement, and then we'll do our D-ring. You can skip that, you don't want to have anything on yours, that's fine. I'm using these little, tiny little lobster clasps, so I can hook this little ring onto my bag. So I cut a 3 8 inch strip by about five inches long because it's thin, so I'm gonna double it over like that and put it through my lobster clasp. These bags lend themselves to having, using small lobster clasp. I wouldn't use, I mean, you can use a 3 quarters inch because that might be all you have because that's what we use for so many other projects, but it's such a small little bag that it really lends itself better to having these smaller hardware. Okay, so there's the placement line right there. So we're gonna center our hardware over that line. 
And you can, um, if you don't want to use my placement, you can go ahead and um, wait until the end of the bag and put yours in wherever you want it at the end of the bag. I got it crooked. Don't want a crooked one. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and run the tack down. Actually, I'm looking at this now and it's a little bit low, so I'm gonna fix that. It should be up closer to the top. Okay, now we can go ahead and make sure everything did not come loose. Make sure this is still taped down and we're gonna run our final pleat marker. And again, make sure you don't want it to hit this pocket right here. See that? Mine would have. Even though I put a little travel stitch in there to try and avoid it, it said, forget you, I'm still going to do that. So it would have hit this pocket and broke. So know how your machine works. All right. Now we're not going to fold the bottom up yet because we want to put our our little snap placement. So we're just going to put the, um, fold the um, exterior up and then we'll stitch our snap placement and then we'll turn it over and fold up the bottom. Because if you fold up the bottom now, the lining, it's gonna go through your lining and your exterior and how are you gonna turn your bag? You won't be able to, but I've taken the time to center the snap for you so you don't have to fuss with that after you're done with the bag. All right. So again, we're going to press um, against, let me take this off the hook, the thing so you can see it. And fold against these tick marks. This is our last fold. And you'll notice your fold should be right here on top of that original placement line. Right, and then tape it down. My foot's over here, fell asleep on me. I don't know how it fell asleep so fast. All right, but see, this is really, this is probably one of my fastest videos. I think we're gonna go ahead and place that little, placement line. All right, now we're going to go ahead and flip over to the back, remove our extra tape. I almost picked up some twang there. Um, I've been watching this sewist from New Zealand. I think she's New Zealand or is she in Australia? One of the two. And she's got that accent and I'm a bad one I pick up people's accents <laughs> and I don't mean to do it and I'm <laughs> noticing I've been picking up her accent it's kind of funny all right there we go so we're gonna go ahead and have that seamed up here this is gonna be our turning hole this is all ready and then we're gonna do our final seam it's gonna go all the way around the bag now remember you're not gonna run that num that number 12 step because that, oops, sometimes the, the hardware comes loose and I forgot to double check. I always double check that your D-ring didn't come loose. Um, we're not gonna run step 12. Step 12 is simply to stop our machine from coming back to center after we're done stitching and potentially getting stuck. Oh, this stitching is not looking good. I think I need a new needle in there. It doesn't gum up too much from this tape, but it does gum up after a while. I've been using this needle for a little while, so. I'm keeping my fingers crossed this first time I use this vinyl. Uh, I'm hoping it's not perforating it. If it did, you guys won't see this video. Oh, my thread just kind of really got all messed up in there. Yep, burr. That's what was doing. You can't tell when it's going so fast. But it's all a mess. See that? Ooh, ooh, ooh. I don't know. Let me see if this stitch is secure enough. I think we need to go back over and redo this one. Oh, 
I think it's okay. I think it's okay. So always look on the back first. Make sure this stitched out nicely because you can always fix it. Um, oop, and look, that lining is just a little short. I'm gonna increase that um, instructions by about a half an inch. Um, and then, there we go. So I'm gonna move my hoop out of the way. Better to have um, a little bit extra fabric than not enough. So mental note to myself to increase the linings by a little bit. All right, so we can go ahead and remove this from the hoop. Did we remove all our tape on the back? We did not. It's easier to remove it while it's still hooped. All right. Now, there is gonna be a, a doggy version of this, and it sounded really cute, and my tester said they asked to keep it. Um, I had to put the other stamp on, but I wasn't thinking. <laughs> The only way we can it, stitch it is on right here, and it's going to get covered up partially with the um, snap. So, but that's okay. So, but it'll fit the dog. I put the hole in the back, but you could put a grommet right there, and um, it'll go through there, or you can put it in the back. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and tear out this stabilizer, and I did forget to mention at the beginning of this video that we're using tear away on this one. This is tearing so badly, so poorly. So the reason my first version had the placement, the curved line at the placement, but what happened is this, the placement line, the stitching was getting stuck in between. So that's why I eliminated that. I just gave you the rough outline of the bag. So you're gonna go ahead and reach inside here and pull this stabilizer out too. Now you see how this um, placement line stitching is right there? Trim that off, don't tear at that because that might actually pull your stitches out. So just reach inside here and get that stabilizer out as well in between the exterior and the lining. Okay, I think I got it all out. Now we're ready to trim it. Just like we always do, see here's where our placement ends, our, our, our stitching, oh, I didn't do a very good job right here. It'll be okay, but see, I got it past that pleat. That wasn't good. It should always be right above that line. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim here to create that little tab like we always do, and then I'm gonna cut all the way around. That little tab just makes it a little bit easier to close the bag up. I'm gonna flip over this side so I can see it a little bit better. And I'm gonna get, just trim about a quarter of an inch to an eighth of an inch all the way around. You can pull your little D-ring strap connector out and not, oh, how in the world did I do that? And not trim it as much if you want. It's more ideal because then you take the pressure off of it. I did trim this pretty closely, but I still wanna show you how you wanna go ahead and around the curve, you wanna notch it. And that's just by putting tiny little triangles in here. All the way around. And oh, you know what, this, is, this one here is probably thin enough I could use that tool that I got from New Moon. I don't know where I put it though. I haven't had luck going through thick vinyl with it. But when you notch this out, what you're doing is you're removing some of the material and it allows the seam allowance to spread out within the seam. If you don't get rid of this material and you try to fold it over, what happens is that you get that bulkiness and you don't get a nice smooth curve because this is pushing up on top of each other in the seam. But if you do this, it allows that final to spread out and flatten out. 
and there I got it a little too close. So and now you're just going to reach inside here and gently start turning it right side out. Now, normally I like to come up here and pull the top all the way down first, but I found on this bag it actually is working better if you tear, if you fold in the end here and start working it like this. So, just what I've been what I've discovered. And be gentle because there's not a whole lot of um, lining tacked down there. You don't want to go all the way into your side seams. You don't want to tear into them. But I had to just give you a, a little bit of a tack. I think it's about a half an inch or three quarters of an inch just to hold it in place so you have something to turn and glue it with. And just work it. I'm going a little bit more gingerly because I've not done with any worked with this vinyl before and I don't know if it's going to perforate on me. So I'm trying to be a little bit careful. This is one of those knockoffs. I think this is Michael Core. Jean is just such a sweetheart. She actually sent this to me as a surprise in one of my orders. New Moon Stitches. So you guys know who my favorite vendors are. My Punk Broidery, New Moon Stitches, Bodio. And for cork, I've been ordering from um, Soda Kind, but she's been, I don't think she's ordering in new cork right now. She's working on other stuff. And then Cork and Cloth is who I found. There's other cork vendors. Use your favorite one, but get it, make sure it's from Portugal. And that's where the better cork is from. And you can tell a difference you can certainly tell a difference. Okay, so I'm almost there. You can still see a little bit of that exterior. So now you can see we got our seam allowance in there, or I mean our stabilizer that we have to cut out. That's why you don't want poly mesh. You want tear away. And that's in the PDF. All right, we're almost there. All right. All these scissors are the Kai 7205. If you go to this um, Starfish Design Embroidery Group, there's a link at the announcement that has a link to my business page that has all my affiliate links to Amazon to my favorite products. Um, affiliate links don't cost you anything extra, but Amazon gives us literally pennies, like a penny and a dollar, um, just to advertise for them. So it gives you a couple extra dollars a month, which helps offset miscellaneous items. Okay, so there we go, we got it almost out. So I'm gonna go ahead and tear that away. So now is the time when, um, before I close this, I wanna reach my hemostats up there. And this is the time I can go ahead and roll them across that seam and make sure it's nice and curved. Because once I close this lining, you won't be able to do that. And now you know I normally on my zipper pouches, I usually wait until I have already turned it right side out and made sure it looks like I want it to look in no issues. Um, with the these pouches, I'm just going ahead and gluing them closed right away because it's not the easiest to open because of how small the opening is. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that right now. I'm going to glue it. It only takes a few seconds for the glue to set, to set up. So let me get a couple of these little clips ready and let me get my glue ready it takes an, an, an extra day for it to cure but it's only um, it only takes like not even a whole minute for it to um, set up so here I'm just gonna fold this in and you can see my where we had the fold for our seam there and then I'm just gonna go ahead and fold it in and then I'm gonna put the glue along this edge and it's gonna seem like this, like that. So it's a little bit different looking than your seam for your zipper pouches. I'm sorry, I'm off camera. Um, this glue's hard to get out, so. I don't 
know if I can do this. All right, let me see if I can do it on camera. Oh, shoot, I just almost got glue all over my bed, my machine. Okay, then I'm just gonna go ahead and meet that up in the middle first, and then on the ends. And then I'm gonna put these little clips on it and hold it in place for just a minute. And let that set up for just a minute. All right, put my lid back on my glue. Always do that because this glue will actually expand and come out of the bottle over time. If you don't, oh, this is Fabri-Tac by Beacon. I have a mess over here again. Yeah, I get distracted this week. I'm supposed to be finishing up. Um, supposed to be finishing up her. Uh, but I decided I'm going to try a five by seven. I don't know if it's going to work, but I'm going to try. And um, so the width won't be too much worse, but it's going to be like only this big. We'll see. It may not work. Um, so hopefully, I'm hoping to get her released this weekend. Okay. And one thing here, see how this is messy around that snap? Just trim the extra threads that you can. Pull out that little stabilizer and then take your lighter and then just go like this and it's going to melt those little strips down. And while you're waiting for your glue to set up, you can actually go ahead and put your... Um, snap on this side of your bag. So I'm going to go ahead and roll this in between my fingers. The downside to making this style of bag in the hoop is that you, um, unless you top stitch it, you do tend to see a little bit of that lining shining or showing through in the, um, on the other side. So that's the only downside, but if you take this to your sewing machine, and roll that lining to the inside like this. And actually, if you iron it too, that would help set it. I'm gonna finger crease it. But I'm okay with it because it actually looks like a self binding or self, yeah, binding or piping. So, and you can see it in the bag. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my stamp on it while we let that glue set up. I'm going to go ahead and use the magnetic snaps, I think. I already have it set up. I'm going to have to order some more of those guys. Going to have to order some more. It's a silver. I don't want that. I want the gunmetal. So if you not use these yet, um, they're from Cam Snaps. You do have to have the special magnetic dies. It's not cheap. None of this stuff is cheap. This is a very expensive hobby. So you got, there's, uh, they apply like rivets. So we need two caps. One female and one male. Females like stick together really strong. Okay, and then we need a male. I always put the male on the flap and the female the receiving end on the other side. So um, the rivets have um, a, are especially designed. So this one's got a protruding button there. So it's meant for the female. So I need to get the female base out. ahead and put my hole punch in here. So I want to make sure I have this since it's the right side, wrong side out, I'm going to make sure that this is all lined up. I'm going to put my hole punch and punch the hole. All right, 
And so this, this, this is the outside. So you want your rivet to be on the outside. So you need to put your bottom part on the fabric side, which is kind of hard to see once you get it punched out there. So your rivet or your cap is going to be on the outside of the bat, the flap. You hear that snap? And then we're going to go ahead and line up that button in, in receiving end here of that die. It kind of locks into place and then just go ahead and press this. And then we're going to go ahead and turn the pouch right side out and then we'll put the other piece on. So our glue should be all set up now. Take these little things off. Okay, it's good enough. And now just flip this to the right side. Um, again, the glue will set 100% in 24 hours. But we can go ahead and turn this right side out. And this is, let me lay this down so you guys can see this. This will be the important part. When you flip this out, you want to press your gusset out. That's what makes it flat, a flat bottom girl. Okay, so just roughly get this all out. Push it out with your fingers. Okay, and then what you're gonna do, <clears throat> you're gonna reach down at the corners here with your finger and push it out and it's gonna form a little triangle there. And it'll form it on the inside and the outside. And you sometimes have to kind of work it. And you might have to pull on it a little bit. What I recommend is, if you're using cotton, is before you turn this inside out, um, take it to the iron. Now see here, you can't see because they're inside here. I have my index finger here and my middle finger here, and they're pushing up on that triangle. And that's what it's going to look like. And we're going to do the same thing over here. And that triangle repeats itself on the lining. You could actually see it. If you turn it right side out, you would see that triangle again. Oh, I forgot to change the thread. I'm like, why do I see green thread? Yeah, why didn't you remind me? I seamed my bag with the green thread. Yuck. Okay, should have switched the black. Okay, so there we go. I'm going to put my fingers in there. And ideally, you want them. It should be about equal on either side but you have to kind of get the pleat all the way out. And if it doesn't look equal, work it again. And that looks equal. And then what you can do is go ahead and see how you wanna um, press this to kind of set the pleat like that. And it's easier on cotton than it is on vinyl. All right, there you go. So now before we would put the receiving end of the snap here, you want to kind of figure out what you're going to use it for because you can have it fold all the way down here and then see how the ends are. Or if you're going to put something that comes up a little bit higher in here, you might want to put your flap like this, like that. So you have to figure that out first. So I'm going to err on the side of, um, halfway and I'm going to do halfway down. So I'm going to get my pen and I'm going to go ahead and make, sure, I'm looking at it right on, make sure it looks even on both sides. All right. And then just roll your snap up and then mark your, line it down here, mark your placement for your hole. And it's kind of hard to see, but I'm keeping an eye out with my eyes where I put it. And I'm going to come in here with my hole punch. And I already forgot. Where, oh, I see where it's at. I'm actually going to use my little pin here and put it in there until I get my hole punch there. Okay. So now, and you might have to fold the fabric up a little. So now I got my hole punch. I'm going to slide that pin out. I want to punch through my pen and then I'm going to go ahead and punch and hopefully I did that right. Lining that up is about probably the hardest part about this project. And I don't know if I got it. Oh, doesn't seem like it snapped. 
Is my blade in bad on this thing? Oh, it did. Just can't hear it. Okay, so now we want to put our cap is going to be on the inside because we want our receiving end here. And before I press that in place, I'm just going to do a real quick little test to make sure that that is lined up right. Because I can always wiggle it around and the cap is going to cover up some of it. And it is. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and put this in here. Make sure it goes through the lining on the inside like that. Then we're going to put our cap on it. If you're using regular plastic cam stamps, then um, you don't have to worry about any of this. Okay, now we're gonna switch over to our button die on the bottom. That's gonna fit into our female piece there. So go ahead and lay her down in here. You have to maneuver it a little bit. And she'll fit into that magnet and she'll pull in and then press down. I'm having to push my um, press all the way to the base for some reason. I'm not sure why. I think I might need to adjust the screw. I think the spring has gotten too tight. I don't normally have to push that hard on it. Okay. Let's get this out of the way. And we'll show you the reveal. my pocket again oh how cute is that so this might fit cards let me see the large one will this one might yep it will so you can use it for a little wallet change purse how cute is that and it's flat so it'll sit for you well the cards are making it kind of top heavy But because it's flat, you have that extra room in the bottom. So there we go, either side. How cute is that? All right, thanks y'all, have a good night.